Now then, it's mid-September again, and it's the time of year that many of us have been waiting for, the anticipated announcement of the regional area test pieces, which we're all going to be playing in uh, the spring of 2022. I'm delighted to bring you a bit of an on-air exclusive here at a bit more Yorkshire Brass, as I'm joined by Sandy Smith. Sandy, of course, is a brass banding legend, great player, adjudicator, composer, conductor, and a member of the panel responsible for choosing the five set works which will be played at next year's regional contests. I'm delighted to say we're going to guide you through the choices and we'll start with the fourth section. Sandy, how are you, first of all? Fine, thanks, David. Yeah, not bad at all. It's good to see you. And uh, this is a, a new role for you, safe to say. It and uh, yeah, we just need to uh, tell everybody what's going on. But I think what the first question I'd like to ask you, how, how are the test pieces chosen? Well, I was asked to go onto this panel back in March last year. So when all this COVID nonsense started, um, and since so since then, things have obviously everybody knows what's happened, um, and we've had time to think and plan ahead for for the forthcoming uh, contests. So there's been a lot of thinking time, and also a lot of time put into thinking what sort of pieces can we make sure that bands are going to enjoy. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of that on social media with bands saying, you know, in in recent years not all the test pieces have been that enjoyable some have some haven't but some definitely haven't worked is the impression i've had from you know from the feedback on uh, on social media and i think people are saying let's get going with hopefully five pieces that bands will enjoy playing and audiences will definitely want to listen to now i've i've, I've now got the list mm -hmm. uh, i've seen the list and the, I think a lot of people on social media were saying, is it going to be regurgitating old pieces? Well, it's very safe to say that sections four, three and two are, they're not new pieces, but they've certainly not seen the area, the area contest stage. So let's start with the fourth section. Um, this is one that people might not know. What have we got in the fourth? It's called Argos by a Swiss composer called Stefan Hodel. H-O-D-E-L. Now, he's quite an experienced composer. He is in his late 40s, and he's written for all sorts of ensembles, um, you know, orchestras, wind bands, choirs. So he's coming from a, a proper, broad musical background. He did some studying in his younger days with Joe Horowitz at the Royal College in London. So we, we're talking well, yeah, about... Nice stuff, then. Yeah, we're talking about someone with a proper pedigree. Um, this piece came to light, when, when the panel met, there's six of us, uh, one of the other members is Sam Harrison, who has the Elland yep, organisation. Yeah, Elland Youth Band, yeah. Um, and, and it was Sam who put me onto this and said, have a listen to this, see what you think. It had been chosen for the European contest uh, in 2019 for the Youth Championships. Yeah. And uh, I thought straight away it was, a, it was just, it hit the mark. It was just well written. Good writing for all the instruments, which often you don't get. I think there is a bit of a fallacy that, you know, good composers write for the top section and, and sort of maybe not quite as good ones for the bottom. Well, this guy knows what he's doing and yeah. he's experienced. And, and it's just light. It's just exciting music. It's light. It's good to listen to. There's loads of good melodies. Everybody gets a go at things. And the, the workload is spread right throughout the band. Mm. This piece was, was written actually back in 2009 um, and it was a set piece for uh, the third section of uh, the Swiss Cantonal Music Festival in Willisau in, in 2010. So it, it's been around a while. Yeah, it has. It's been there and, and it's been, well, not overlooked. Well, probably overlooked, yeah, you know, we, yeah. we, but it's up to us now to try and hunt these pieces out mm. and, uh, and see there, there tends to be quite a lot of good lower section music being written on the continent mm. at the moment. The choice of the fourth section test piece, Sandy, is called Argos by Stefan Hodel. So that's the fourth section. Argos is the title of the piece. Um, I am fortunate to have listened to the piece. Now, sometimes when I listen to test pieces, it'll take me three or four goes to decide if I think I like the piece and will it work. Let me tell you that when I listened to this piece by Stefan Hodel, the first time through, I just nodded my head. And I thought, yeah, this this will work. It's a test, I think, for the end seats in the in the fourth section bands. Um, but we'll be playing that piece very very shortly, so you'll be able to listen to it anyway. Let's move on now to the third section. Um, now here we have a a piece of music by 
someone who I consider to be brass band royalty. And I'm absolutely amazed that this piece has never, ever been an area test piece. Tell us all about this one and the history and everything behind it. OK, this is Facets of Glass by Gordon Langford. Now, Gordon's music is... I, I am, again, he's a bit of a hero. I was lucky enough during my early time at Black Dyke to have... Gordon used to come to recordings and we used to record all his music and yeah. all that. And I was brought up in that sort of thing during the 70s and 80s where he did all those traditionally British folk songs. And, I mean, he's just and a master... great classmate. LPs and CDs, yeah, yeah. Remat, you know. Yeah, and, but the, the, there is a slight problem with some of the Langford stuff and as much as the typesetting of it is it's it's long before the days of computer programs. Yeah. So it was handwritten yeah. by a copyist or by Gordon himself, um, which I saw him do in recording sessions. He would be sat at the back still writing parts out yeah, while yeah, we yeah. were recording something else. But So th there are mistakes. There are um, things that need tidying up and, yeah. and sort of ratifying. So um, this was a piece that came up, and we thought, right, I, I actually put my head in the block, said, look, if you want me... To oversee some of the, you know, the corrections and everything else. So there is a guy at the, the Shandos Library, uh, who looks after all this brass music. Stephen, I forget his name, um, his second name now. Forgive me, um, but he actually put it onto Sibelius, onto the computer software. Yeah. And then I took it and I just basically tidied it up from, from the manuscript score, fix any wrong notes and things. So we do have a proper working. So this this has been rescored. This is ready well, ready for the reason. No, no, I, I didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that'd be like changing Shakespeare. Yeah, it was um, I, I've certainly tidied up any mistakes. Yeah. Uh, any discrepancies and whatever yeah. else. So we have a we have a properly sorted and a new set of parts a new for set it. Of parts yeah. that score, some yeah. of our bands will almost certainly have parts for this. They, they might have. Um, yeah. It goes back to 1984. Does this? And it, it, there is a bit of a clue in the title. Facets of glass. It was actually written for the Pilkingtons contest, which was held over in St Helens, of course. Pilkington glass. Yeah, I think um, they, they were the so ones that commissioned. They it. commissioned it in '84, and actually, it's to my knowledge on a you know, sort of a top-end contest basis. It's only been used twice, both at Pontins and both in the fourth section. Mm. So, you know, for a third section test piece, this should be enjoyable and you're not being asked to do anything that any bands, you know, <laughs> further up the line are doing. In fact, it's been used before below, but we know with the Gordon Langford piece, it's going to be special and enjoyable. So uh, uh, definitely looking forward to hearing the bands do that Um it's not not really being recorded that much. In fact, we've had a bit of a problem yeah, getting hold of a recording, and we've managed. We've managed, and we've yeah. got there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not on any mainstream CD, so nobody really probably would have seen this one coming. So just remind us again what the third section one is, Sandy. So it's Facets of Glass by Gordon Langford. Really looking forward to this one. Um, you will hear that one on next week's a bit more Yorkshire Brass. We're playing the pieces today from the fourth and the first sections later in the programme. We now know that the fourth section test piece is called Argos, and uh, we know that the third section piece is Facets of Glass. Um, let's just talk about the panel and how you all come to be on the panel, how you all get together and when, and how long is it since you picked the pieces. I think everybody's intrigued to know when this is done. And now it's kept quiet as well. Yeah. Um, well, I was asked last March, so March 2020, to join the panel. Uh, at that time, uh, a couple of people had left. Mike Fowles and Paul Holland had left. And uh, Philip Morris asked myself and Bob Childs to go onto the panel, which I was delighted to do because I'm, I've been banging on about this for, for ages. Well, the man's got taste, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, basically, th there are sort of lists go around of things that have been suggested and then you're invited to put your own, you know, tuppence worth in yeah. and then we sort of whittle them down a bit on emails and then we get together, we got together in June uh, this year, so June 2021 20, yeah. uh, and in Birmingham and we had a meeting which was three or four hours just yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about all this um, and we just sort of, we have a listen to things, we talk and it's, it's, yes, I mean, it's obviously very democratic, but we were certainly in my head, um, I had an idea that after all this pandemic stuff, that we had to really, it was a, a really important job to come up with test pieces that were, the thing I kept thinking about was how are you going to entice someone to leave their armchair on a January night mm. after they've had a hard day at work yeah. to go to the band room? Yeah. 
and and spend two hours on something, you know. So the the pieces I, I did keep banging on about all this that we were wanted pieces that were interesting. All the, the players would be interested, conductors and audiences as well. Mm. Um, this is going to be a big test of bands going back yeah. the areas in it's the new massive. year. Um, in as much as do we still have the numbers? Do we still have an audience? Are people still as enthusiastic? And yeah. I think our job was to try and pick test pieces that were going to. As, as far as we can to help that enthusiasm to get rekindled. Yeah, reignite the old yeah, flames, if you like. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's your answer, everybody. The, 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 the test pieces were, were chosen in June. We're now in mid-September. Um, now, I have to say that looking around, certainly on our group, on the Yorkshire Brass Group, we've got, we're into the thousands of people on there. Nobody has nailed any of these test pieces. I'm del so I'm delighted that, you know, uh, we're able to bring you this as, as an exclusive on a bit more Yorkshire Brass. So there's how the panel works. Okay, so we've discussed the fourth section and the third section test pieces. Now, the second section, um, this piece, well, it, it's just underused. It's been used at Pontins twice mm -hmm. in the second section. It was the national second section final test piece in 1996. And it's not been used as a set work anywhere in the UK in a major contest since 2009. Now, I think for a second section test piece, this is astounding. And also, I was so delighted to see when this came in because you've got Gordon Langford in there. And I'm delighted you've got Gough Richards in there now as well. Go on, tell us what we've got in the second section. Uh, the second section test piece for the areas is The Aeronauts by Gough Richards. Fabulous. And uh, I've played this piece before in, in, in contests at, uh, at local level. Uh, and it's magnetic. Yeah. I mean, there, there is a bit of a pattern here and it's deliberate. Um, I thought that, that we need to be showing composers who are intending to write for band how it's done. And I think all of the composers we have on, on this list, all five, actually show how to write properly for bands. Um, and it, I think it just encourages people to... Anyone who's going to be composing, maybe playing, maybe conducting, it, studying a score like this for a couple of months will actually show them how to write properly for band. Yeah, and this, this is a very simple piece of music in a way because it, Gough Richards loved flying and he simply dedicated the test piece to his father. N nothing more than that, but it was written for the West of England Festival in 1978, as I understand it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I remember uh, round about, just slightly after that, it became published, and I think I, I played it. Um, it was one of Jeff Whittam's favourites, because yeah. Jeff used to do a lot of golf stuff with yeah. Hammonds. Um, but it's again, it's just so well written for the mm. instruments. There's nothing silly. Uh, in fact, in all of the pieces, I'm, I'm, it has been a deliberate thing in my head to avoid any test pieces that sound too test piecey. Yeah. You know, so they don't just suddenly stop after three minutes of waffly rubbish going on and, mm. and have a cadenza. They, they're all, it's all integrated into it. Nothing sounds out of place. Nothing sounds too high or low for the instruments. It's it's just so well written, and it definitely tests the end chairs, which to me, what a t you know, a test piece should do that. It does, but it tests them in the right way. It tests yeah. them lyrically, and you know, not just you know how many notes can you play. No, um, but the material is good. It's listenable. It's enjoyable. It's memorable. Yeah, and there's there's actually bits of "I Vow to Thee, My Country" going on through the aeronauts at, at certain points. So it's a melody definitely that people will recognise, and and I'm sure the second section bands will will absolutely love it. I hope so. Good. Yeah. Good, good. Okay, so we're climbing up the ladder further now. We've just done the second section, the Aeronauts by Gough Richards. Um, we're now going into the first section. And again, a piece of music here which first appeared in the late 60s. Um, it was an area test piece in 1976 at championship level. But 20 years later, down the line, it was the first section area test piece. Um, it was used in the Grand Shield in 1994. It's been a, an own choice test piece many, many times. But again, on mainstream contesting, it's not been seen for a long time. So it's about time we had this one back out as well. This is a bit of Gilbert Vinter. Which one have we got? We've got Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. 
Absolutely wonderful. Uh, yeah, I, I timed this was that, and, and he is another composer who absolutely knew how to write test pieces. Oh, he did, he, I mean, he really, really did. Um, and he was a great loss. He died in 1969. Um, I, I think he was 60 years old. Yeah, he was only, very young. Only yeah, that, I mean, young. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the whole body of Vinter's work is, is, is great stuff. Um, th there has been a problem with the first section, I think, especially over the last 10 years, in as much as the, the, the standards of the test species, both his compositions and his difficulty has fluctuated a bit. Hmm. I mean, it was one of the things I mentioned straight away and, uh, you know, we, we seemed to be developing a situation where there was a lot of really good music was falling down the crack between the championship section and the first section. Yeah. And we need to readdress that and get things back on an even keel. There have been some great pieces uh, in the first section. Uh, essay, Eddie Gregson's yeah. essay. Yeah, essay is a good one. Um, Land of the Long White Cloud, I think, was in yeah, there that for this part. I mean, they're, they're proper yeah. things. And then yeah. there's been some that just, to be perfectly honest, haven't really worked. No, did not hear the um, spot. So we, I think there's going to be a, a bit of a redressing of the balance there. And we have to be aware also that bands that have aspirations to be promoted to the championship section should be able to play these pieces. Yeah. They should. I mean, the, the gap is wide, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's sometimes too much for bands. Yeah. Uh, and it's unfair on the bands themselves. It's not their fault. Yeah. The, the test pieces that they're being asked to play have not really been hitting the mark. But I, I think with Spectrum, I think we've got a piece that a number of first section bands will play. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's one of those pieces where there is a lot of safety in numbers. There's some little solos in it, yeah. But they're all, they're all well written. They're not yeah. out of range. They're not stupidly exposed. Um, and it's exciting music, again, going through all these colours. It's... It's just interesting, exciting music. It is, know? and and after twenty eight years, it's time I that you know so. that yeah. this one was back out. So, Sandy, a reminder again: the first section bands will be playing Spectrum by Gilbert Vinter. That's fabulous. Okay, so we've named the test pieces now for sections four, three, two, and one, and we're going to do a championship section in a second. But before we do that, a couple of other questions I think which listeners on the program would like to to hear. Um, particularly anyone who listens to the show who is a composer and has got aspirations to get their test piece, one of their test pieces, onto a, an area or a national finals stage. You, you're a composer, a great arranger. What advice would you give them, in, you know, from the panel's point of view here, what are you looking for in order to get over that line? Because the areas are a serious business and the music needs to be good. What would you say? It, it does, um, and, and there definitely has to be this hierarchy of moving up through four, three, two, one championship, which is how, when we have a meeting, that's how it's discussed. We start with the fourth, and then once we've got that nailed down, we can move up. So we're looking for a progression yeah. of difficulties. Some of the problems that happen with pieces that are submitted is that, and this is really frustrating, is that you get maybe a piece that's, about third section standard and got some really good stuff in it. And then all of a sudden it goes bananas. There's a mental soprano on it solo, yeah. you know, that, you know, three or four people in the country can play and, and it lets it down or there's something like that. I would, the advice I would give is listen to good, listen to the, the, the most successful pieces and the yeah. most successful composers. I mean, all of these guys on here are um, experts at scoring. Don't, tr don't do try to reinvent the wheel. Is no, what don't, no, and don't try, try if you can, and this is a wee bit harder. Um, the, there are certain submissions that turn up and they're obviously conceived first and foremost as test pieces hmm. or the, the, certainly the, the ideas that these composers have of a test piece is that, you know, we have three or four minutes of technical waffle and then yeah. a big cadenza. It, it, don't do that. No. It's getting a bit old hat now, and also the, these people are just are writing good music. There seems to have been a bit of a tendency to sway towards unusual time signatures recently as well, and copy and pasting a lot's been There's mentioned. There's a lot of copy and pasting. Um, time signatures, yeah, they're not as difficult as... as you know, they think, I think people think that, yeah, they're going to try and trip you up. Mm. Once you've learnt how to do them... yeah. It becomes automatic pilot. Yeah. You know, it's it's not. Yeah, there's a lot more subtle ways of of testing players. In the recent past, I've seen you know seen two or three pieces. I think which quite obviously on social media, people have said, well, it's a ten minute piece, but actually there's only six minutes with the yeah. music because some of it's, it's there is that, and so, and and it's yeah, that's one of the pitfalls of using 
computer software yeah. is that it's it's quite easy to cut and paste a, a chunk, you mm-hmm. know, 34 seconds worth of something. It's just... And I know there should be... There has to be... Um, At times, yes. There has to be, yeah. you know, style and, and form in the pieces, but um, it's too much of a giveaway, mm. you know. I think the other question... Um, with your, with your adjudicator's head on, mm-hmm. advice to bands. The one thing that comes across loud and clear is that some people will buy this piece of music next Monday mm-hmm. and by Wednesday it'll be on the stand, um, whereas other bands won't touch it until January, maybe mid to, mid, you know, mid to late January. Again, I think that depends on the level of the band. But d- do you think some bands can start too early with it? Um, I, I, see, that's up to the individual band. I mean, I remember um, years ago the the, the London piece, uh, the, the the Albert Hall piece, or the Open piece, was announced six weeks before. Yeah, and that was it. Mm. I can't really remember what happened with the areas, mm. um, but you got a far far less preparation time. And I know it's different times, and I know mm. things are different. Um, I would say that conductors have got to be in charge of that for their own bands. Yeah. I can I, I totally understand why. Um, as soon as it gets announced, they want to have a run through just yeah, to find out. Absolutely. You know, we, we all did that when you know yeah, we were yeah. younger. Get the part out, find out if you know what you've got, well, what you've got, all and that take sort it of on thing. For a few weeks and do your own. Yeah, thing and listen, um, listen I, to the one thing I would avoid doing. Um, I know, no, no, this goes sort of contrary to what you're doing now. Is you're going to play these test pieces? Don't rely on just this one recording, no, whatever absolutely. it may be. Um, because I often see that in in social media where where they say. Oh, I don't understand it. Um, we played it exactly like the regionals recording, mm. and uh, we got eighth. Yeah. And got criticised for the interpretation. Well, okay, that's that's an individual choice. Work out your own. Read the score. We never we never had that. I no. mean, we, we, you and I were growing up. We we just you got the score out, and the conductor and the, the players conductor, worked yeah, out how it was the their own went. interpretation yeah. of it. I, I would say be, be more be more aware of that. I certainly don't get tied down to one way of doing it. But it's it's the usual things, isn't it? Dynamics. Oh, it's, it's always it's no matter what section it is, it's always it's going to be the same things. Yeah. Can you play together? Can yeah. you play in tune? Yeah. Do you make a nice sound individually and collectively? Is the balance good? Are the dynamics well observed? Um, it's 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 not. And invariably, I think at the lower levels, it comes down to bands which can play the quietest part of the test piece in tune. The, they're the hardest things to do. It's not rocket do. science, no, is it, really? No, it's not. They're the hardest things to do, and I, and I would avoid this idea of just of, of trying to bully your way into the prizes by mm. s- supposedly sounding bigger yeah. than anyone else. I think it, it can sound raw, it can sound yeah. out, of, out of balance. And it also um, is very tiring for the band. Yeah, and what you've got to remember is it's not just the performance on the day, it's how you rehearse that for the last, especially yeah. the last two or three weeks. You know how much is the band going to end up totally tired? Yeah. You know, yeah. and and this is going to be the first big test for bands going back after this long break. Mm. Very much so. And it's hard. It's hard. You know, it is. Nothing sure. We've got four wonderful test pieces. We're going to play the first and the fourth section test pieces in this program. Next week we'll play the third and the second, and then in a couple of weeks' time. We're going to play the one for the for the big lads and lasses, the championship section. Um, what a wonderful choice this one is. This first appeared in 1982 for the Nationals. Uh, very quickly, it was so popular, it was the area test piece in 85. British Open uh, in 88 and 2004, so it's had two goes at that. It's done Pontins, it's done the Scottish Open in 2003. But again, it's disappeared off the shelf a little bit. It's not been around as... A, a national competition choice since 2003. So this is a welcome return as well. Sandy, tell us what we've got for the championship section. The championship section has got contest music by Wilfred Heaton. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is another another wonderful choice, um, and it will work. It will work the bands, but again, it, it's a piece of music that they, I'm sure, will enjoy playing, and the audience was, will really, really get into listening to. Yeah, there was a bit of a discussion um, when we were. Uh, doing this panel thing. Um, this was on the list as, as a sort of potential piece mm. for consideration when I joined. Yeah. And I immediately sort of grabbed it and sort of thought, right, let's see if we can go with this. Um, I just think it is it is exactly what it says, mm. contest music. There is... Wilfred Heaton was a master composer. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so well written. Again, it's 
it's just quality. When you look at the score, the score doesn't really look that, you know. No, but then when you start hard, listening. Uh, but I'll tell you what, um, again, there, were, there was a discussion about trying to make sure that we picked pieces, not just this one, but going forward as well, which um, avoided the, or, or it stopped bands trying to bully their way into the into the prizes mm. by either speed yeah. or volume. Yeah. Um, now, you can't do that with this. You have to play this properly. It's a, I, I always sometimes I equate it to being, it's sort of naked music. It's, there's nothing, you, you can't cover anything up. It, everything is exposed everywhere. Yeah. All the band have to play their parts. The, the way it's written, there's not a note out of place. Um, it's, there's, there's not any sort of filler notes or waffly sort of repetitive rhythmic things going on or anything like that. It's just proper music. I mean, it was written in 1973. They, they were going to choose it for the Nationals and then it was decided that it was it was too idiosyncratic, too modern. Um, yeah. But the sketches that you had for it were going back into the 40s and 50s. With they, they were going through at that time, of course, 73. It's, well, 74, you, you had... Um, was a Malcolm Arnold, wasn't it? Yeah. In 74. Yeah. Uh, and Rita Matalo in 75. Yeah. So this one, it Th had to wait its sounds, turn. Yeah, I mean, it did sound, it's a lot more modern musical language than that. Um, nothing untoward uh, well, that, that should, but again, it's a sort of piece where you have to have quality throughout, throughout the, band. the band. And that's what it's and all you've about. You've got to have a quality conductor who can, yeah. who can make music rather than just try and sort of bluff their way through yeah. by speed. Yeah, you know? and def definitely in the championship section, should, you know, it should be. be it's, yeah. a, it's the test of the top brass yeah. bands in the United Kingdom, and that's what we're after. Yeah, it is. You know, to get the best bands to the Albert Hall in, in, in October to compete on another wonderful test piece. Yeah. Let's reiterate again, the test piece, Sandy, for the championship section for next year, March 2022, is going to be... Contest music by Wilfred Heaton. And there you go. Five wonderful pieces of music. In the fourth section, Stefan Hurdle's Argos. In the third section, Facets of Glass by Gordon Langford. In the second section, The Aeronauts by Gough Richards. Gilbert Vinter's Spectrum will be the test piece for our bands in the first section. And Contest Music by Wilfred Heaton has been chosen for the championship section. Bit of an exclusive for you today on a bit more Yorkshire Brass. David Hoyle here with Sandy Smith. Thanks for listening as always. Sandy, thanks for coming along and for sharing this information with us. It's great that we can get it out to the, the regular band in public on the day that these test pieces are publicly announced. So I do thank you for coming along and doing that. And no doubt we'll catch up again uh, when we get the, uh, the national test pieces <laughs> for later in October. Thanks again for coming in. No problem. Thank you, David.